Happy New Year to everyone and welcome back to another Mic Locker. New year and new mics to play around with. I got a message in the comment section of a recent video inquiring about shotgun mics for voiceover use. I was a little confused at first since I had never heard of anyone using a shotgun mic as a voiceover mic, but the more I dug into it, the more I found people using strange tools for odd jobs. Apparently the $1,000 Sennheiser MKH416 is an industry standard mic for not only video, but for certain voiceover work as well. As I dug further, I realized that this hole went deeper than some JFK assassination conspiracy theories. As a studio guy, I didn't even own a shotgun mic and never even thought to use it in the studio for a whole number of reasons that we'll touch on in a bit. But first things first though, as we do, let's take a look at the history behind the line or shotgun mic. The line microphone was first patented by Harry F. Olson in 1941. That name sounds familiar and you watch this channel, you might remember him as the RCA ribbon mic developer. Our first recurring character, yay. The mic consisted of a diaphragm and a tube attached to the front of it called an interference tube. This tube has notches cut out at certain distances from the diaphragm to allow sound to enter through the sides, which cancel out inside the tube. It's pretty ingenious. The result was a mic that had a polar pattern that's referred to as lober. The lober pattern looks very strange indeed. It's certainly not something that you get to select when other mics when you're thinking cardioid, omni, figure eight, etc. Instead, this looks more like a floor-to-lee than a polar pattern. The idea is that the narrow lobe sticks out of the front and leaves the mic to pick up very unidirectionally, while these smaller lobes sticking out of the back and sides pick up less with the mic rejecting sound much of the angles around the mic. Now, one might think that this is great. I can point it at something and it'll reject almost everything that's around it. And for the most part, that's true until you actually try to use it. We set up a number of different scenarios trying to use the shotgun mics we picked up and found that their application seems to be a lot more limited than the math would have you believe. Now, there's a lot of bad info out there about how mics work and one of those things that experienced engineers like to talk about is microphone reach or pull. Let's get this straight. Microphone reach is not a real thing. There's no physics or science behind the idea and it's just plain wrong. The idea that a mic's diaphragm can somehow magically reach out into an area and pick up sound is a little absurd, and I wish that well-known publications that I won't mention here and manufacturers would stop publishing articles with BS like this, even if they're written by famous engineers that clearly don't know how sound works, which further perpetuates the falsehoods. Mics don't reach anywhere. The sound has to come to the diaphragm, and that's the only way that it works. A mic can have incredible directionality, which can be misstrewed as such, but bottom line is the sound is coming to the mic. So we're looking at three mics today. First is the Sennheiser MKE 200. This is a small camera or phone mountable electret mic that does not require phantom power. It's not technically a shotgun mic, but it's intended to be used in much the same way and in similar applications. It retails for around 100 USD and is very compact and light. There's essentially nothing in this mic except a capsule that's smaller than a US dime and a jack. I opened it while trying to find out where the hum was coming from, as you'll see later on. The mic comes with a dead cat to wrap over for use on windy days and a couple of connection cables to help connect to a camera or smartphone as well as a little carrying case. The polar pattern is super cardioid. The frequency response is 40 hertz to 20 kilohertz. It has a maximum SPL of 120 decibels and the self noise is around 20 decibels. There's no impedance given and it doesn't really matter since you can't really hook this up to a proper mic preamp anyway. This microphone's length is just about two and three quarters inches long, and for some reason you plug the cable into the front of the mic, not the back. Next is the Sennheiser MKE 600. Don't let the name fool you, even though the mics share a designation in their name, they are nothing alike. The MKE 600 retails for around 330 USD and can be powered by either a single AA battery or phantom power. There is a high-pass filter switch on the body as well as an on-off button with an LED for a battery power indication. The mic comes with a neat shock mount-ish shoe clip, but no mic stand clip for some reason. An XLR to 1 8 inch adapter cable is included to help connect to cameras. There's a carrying case as well as a large foam windscreen. The mic can capture 40 Hz to 20 kHz. The polar pattern is considered lower. Maximum SPL is 132 decibels while using phantom power and 126 decibels while using battery. 
Self noise is 15 decibels using phantom power or 16 decibels if you're using the battery. I could not find the impedance for this microphone anywhere in the manual on the website or anyplace else. If somebody knows what it is, please let me know. The low cut filter for this microphone is set at 100 hertz. The length of the microphone is just over 10 inches. Last on the list today was a suggestion by one of our viewers is the Audio-Technica AT897. The mic retails for around 250 USD and includes a standard mic stand clip, a AA battery for use in powering the mic if phantom power is not available, and a very long foam windscreen. In addition, the mic comes in a comically oversized semi-hard carrying case. Apparently, the same case is used for some of the larger shotgun mics that Audio-Technica makes, and the remaining space is just filled with foam insert. The mic claims to be able to capture the full audio spectrum of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. The polar pattern is considered low bar. The maximum SPL is 112 decibels while using phantom power, or 98 decibels if using the battery. Output impedance here is 250 ohms if using phantom power, or 300 ohms if using the battery. Signal to noise ratio is 77 dBA weighted. The low cut filter on this microphone is set at 80 hertz. The length here is just under 11 inches. Now that that's out of the way, let's look at some scenarios in which we use the mic. First is a distance test. We set all three mics on a camera cage and progressively backed up the camera away from the sound source in three foot increments, a little less than a meter for all our metric people. Let's take a quick look at that. These are the shotgun microphones at three feet from the camera. These are the shotgun microphones at three feet from the camera. These are the shotgun microphones at three feet from the camera. These are three shotgun mics from six feet away. These are three shotgun mics from six feet away. These are three shotgun mics from six feet away. These are three shotgun mics from nine feet from the camera. These are three shotgun mics from nine feet from the camera. These are three shotgun mics from nine feet from the camera. This is three shotgun mics 12 feet from the camera. This is three shotgun mics 12 feet from the camera. This is three shotgun mics 12 feet from the camera. We can hear that the mics when close pick up pretty well. I noticed some noise in the small Sennheiser 200, which others have experienced as well, but I shouldn't have to fix things out of the box and I'm certainly not gonna do it for these mics. Which is a shame because I actually didn't mind how that mic sounded at three feet from the camera. When we get to the nine foot mark, the mics start to sound a little roomier sounding and the quality kind of tanks. The 200 got pretty gross even at the six foot mark and in all fairness, this mic is aimed at vloggers and podcasters who are gonna have their camera or phone usually within an arm's distance. And it does certainly sound better than the onboard mic of many cameras and phones except for that hum. At 12 feet, the mics were only useful as a reference for a performance and quality is just completely shot. Now, bear in mind, these mics aren't really intended to be used indoors, but let's try this outdoors now. MKE 200 at three feet. MKE 200 at 6 feet. MKE 200 at 9 feet. MKE 200 at 12 feet. MKE 200 at 15 feet. MKE 600 at 3 feet. MKE 600 at 6 feet. MKE 600 at 9 feet. MKE 600 at 12 feet. MKE 600 at 15 feet. AT897 at 3 feet. AT897 at 6 feet. AT897 at 9 feet. AT897 at 12 feet. AT897 at 15 feet. All right, now let's take a look at it in a voiceover scenario. Six inches to the right. Six inches to the left. Six inches high. Six inches low. You have to give it some thought and wonder, how did this little Eminem do it? How was he skilled enough to be the last Eminem in the bag out of all the other Eminems in the bag? All the different colors, all the different sizes, 
I always let the last one go because he was the strongest, the swiftest, the smartest peanut out of the bunch. If you respect the candy, you gotta respect the nut. Six inches to the right, six inches to the left, six inches on top, six inches below. And this is center. You have to give it some thought and wonder. How did this little M&M &M do it? How was he skilled enough to be the last M&M &M in the bag out of all the other M&Ms in the bag? All the different colors, all the different sizes. I always let the last one go because he was the strongest, the swiftest, the smartest peanut out of the bunch. If you respect the candy, you gotta respect the nut. All right, so this is really strange. When the mic is connected to the camera directly by a cable, uh, there's a horrible 60 cycle hum. When I connect this mic to the wireless transmitter and I'm going wireless into the camera, there's no more hum. Okay, so here's what I found with this mic. If you have this plugged into your camera and your camera is plugged into a wall source for power, the hum is unbearable. If the camera is running off of straight battery power, so essentially having a floating ground within itself, the mic is fine. Six inches to the right, six inches to the left, six inches above, six inches below. You have to give it some thought and wonder. How did this little M&M &M do it? How was he skilled enough to be the last M&M in the bag out of all the other M&Ms in the bag? All the different colors, all the different sizes. I always let the last one go because he was the strongest, the swiftest, the smartest peanut out of the bunch. If you respect the candy, you gotta respect the nut. All right, so this request was for my opinion on the matter, and I usually leave that up to the viewer to make their own decisions, but since I was asked to weigh in on the use of shotgun mics for voiceover purpose, I'm gonna offer this. I'm not sold on the idea of using shotgun mics for voiceover. When you're in a control studio environment, I don't see the need for crazy directionality and rejection. If you're in a less than ideal environment, I could see it working better than a large diaphragm condenser, but I don't see it working better than something like an RE20 or an SM7B. You need to keep your head very still or at the very least in a single position that you can easily return or zero to. When I do voiceover work, I try to be a little more animated and this just would not work for me. For dialogue for video where you're doing ADR or overdubs and you want to have the same tonality as the original boom mic, okay, yeah, I could see that maybe. But overall, not really something I'm going to seek out to do for any production purposes that I would have. Out of the mics we looked at, I prefer the Sennheiser MKE 600. I felt that the Sennheiser complemented my voice better. Not to say that the AT wouldn't be better for somebody else, but for me, the Sennheiser was my pick. Physically, they're not very different, and the AT is a little longer, and spec-wise, they're pretty much on par with each other. The MKE 200 is mainly a vlogger mic, which one could argue I'm doing here, but my camera is usually a little bit more than three feet away, and the hum from this mic is kind of a deterrent for me. So what did you think? Please leave me some feedback in the comments and tell me your thoughts. While you're at it, please hit like and subscribe if you got anything from this video so we can continue to bring you videos every week or so. And if you're interested in being notified when we put up a new video, hit the notify button. That's it for this time. This is Pags, signing off. <laughs>